What does it mean in software engineering to have mutable or immutable objects? How does that fit into infrastructure, tooling? Uh, what about containers? How did they contribute to all that picture or maybe virtual machines and so on and so forth? So let's talk about the differences between managing something in a mutable or immutable way. If we would be talking about code, we would say that a mutable object can be changed after it was created. And an immutable object cannot be changed. In programming, mutability and immutability refers to the state of an object. Is that any different for infrastructure and applications and services? Well, let's find out. But before we do, Let's talk about code for a second longer. What are the benefits of using immutability in code? And if you Google the subject, you will find quite a few benefits like improved readability, improved efficiency, traceability, improved safety, better caching, easier testing and debugging, and so on and so forth. Now, that does not mean that we are all convinced that we should use immutability when writing code or that we should be mutable. People are still very divided about which approach is better and it will probably depend on the situations you're in and whether you're using, let's say, functional programming or no and so on and so forth. But this is not about code mutability and immutability. I want to talk about everything else, infrastructure, services, applications, and so on and so forth. And the reason why I brought code into the picture is because it somehow all started with code. Now, I'm not sure whether programming languages were the first to come with immutability, but it definitely became popular before it became widely adopted with everything else. To understand how all that applies to infrastructure and everything else, let's talk about very briefly what do we really do when we manage infrastructure and applications and operating systems and so on and so forth. On a very, very high level, we need to create servers. We can have one server, two servers, three servers and so on and so forth. Each of those servers has to have an operating system and then we deploy applications to those servers. One server might have two applications, another one might have one application, and the third one might have three applications, and so on and so forth. But in a nutshell, we have servers, we have operating systems on those servers, and we have applications running on top of that operating system. From the operational perspective, we're talking about the ability to install, to configure, to upgrade, and maybe sometimes to downgrade versions of all those things. We might be running, let's say, version one of our operating system on every single server, or they could be different versions. And then we run specific versions of our applications. Typically, we have more than one application and uh, each of those applications are running at least one version, which can be different from one case to another and so on and so forth. And then over time, we need to upgrade those things, either by replacing existing releases with new releases or upgrading in place. We're going to talk about how we upgrade. The point, the important part here is that each of those versions of operating system and of applications, sometimes even of servers, need to be occasionally, every once in a while, upgraded. And this is where the real difference comes into place. The way we upgrade operating systems, servers, or applications differs greatly depending on whether we are applying mutable or immutable processes and principles. For the rest of this video, I will be saying infrastructure, but what I really, really mean whenever I say infra or infrastructure, I mean both servers and applications and the operating systems. So I will be using generic term to describe all of those things, but you should know that what I really mean is everything really. So let's start with mutable. How does it work when we have mutable infrastructure and what are the pros and cons of doing it that way? Having something mutable really means that there is the ability to change or mutate that something. That can be operating system, it can be application, it can be anything. What really matters is that we change it whenever we need it to be somehow different. And there are quite a few advantages of doing it that way. To begin with, we do not need to move data 
to a new machine whenever we change something because we are changing it at runtime in situ so the data can stay where it is. Now that could be dangerous or no, but we're going to talk about it later. For now, that is a big bonus or simplification of managing things in mutable way because we are not really creating new something, we are just mutating it so the data can stay on the same machine. Another obvious advantage is that we do not need to create everything from scratch every single time. If we want to upgrade, we can just replace one binary with another, or we can tweak configuration of something and so on and so forth. So it's definitely easier, at least at the very beginning, to just change something at runtime, tweak it a little bit. And finally, it is much easier, or not, but for now, let's say that it is easier to fix issues quickly when we just go to our application or infrastructure or server or whatever we have and fix whatever is going on over there or whatever is causing the problems. Now there are some cons of managing infrastructure in mutable way and the bigger problem or issue is the risk. It is relatively high risk to modify things at runtime, to modify them in situ. If we are tweaking our application, it is uncertain what that application is at any given moment because it can be many different things depending on how we tweak it. If something goes wrong with the application, we are often in a position of asking, eh, now what? How do I actually create that application? What are all the tweaks that I did to it? That's even worse when the whole server goes down then we are in real trouble typically when managing things in mutable way. How do we fix those issues? When an application goes down, how do we create a new application, a new instance of the application that is exactly the same as the one that uh, failed to work? Assuming that we want it to be the same, or even worse, when the whole server goes down, how do we create a completely new server with all the same specifications, same data, same application, same operating system and so on and so forth because remember we are tweaking it all the time so we are never really 100% sure what we have which is not necessarily that bad until things go wrong. As a result of that constant tweaking there is a higher chance of configuration drifts because we are changing something here something there and so on and so forth and as time passes we are less and less sure of what we have in our system because it's a collection of small changes that are very, very hard to track and very, very hard to reproduce. Or if not very hard, at least harder than the alternative, which I'm going to discuss later. Next, it is very hard or harder, let's say, to document and track versions and to have all this information about what is running where and how and so on and so forth. Similarly, it is harder to recreate something from scratch. If we need the whole server created from scratch, we need to make sure that we have the same server, the same operating system, same data over there and same applications running, exactly the same, right? And that's the problematic part because with mutable approach, it is hard to guarantee that things are indeed the same as something we are trying to replicate. And the last negative point, negative thing about the mutable that I'm going to mention is that it takes longer to create whatever we need to create. Because if you look at the previous example, when we want to create a new server with new operating system and new data and new applications that are the same as something else, we need to build all that. We need to build the server and then we need to install the operating system inside of that server. We need to put data there somehow and then we need to deploy or instantiate all the instances of the applications that are supposed to be running in that server. Now let's talk about all those same things, but in immutable fashion. What does it mean to have immutable infrastructure and everything else? To begin with, the state is unchangeable. It is immutable. It cannot be modified. So whichever versions we are running of our operating systems and applications and everything else, we cannot simply 
upgrade them by modifying their state, maybe changing binaries, changing configurations, whatever we are doing, we cannot do it. We cannot modify any of those things when we want to upgrade them. I will talk about how we do that later. For now, what matters is that we cannot mutate applications, operating system or anything else. So they're always staying at the same version. Whatever the version is, that's the version that it will run forever or at least until we shut it down, until we destroy those versions of the things that we are having. So we are not applying patches, we are not upgrading, we are not downgrading directly. Instead, we create new infrastructure, new applications, and new whatever we need, and we decommission the old instances of the stuff that we are running. And that typically means that we create an image of a virtual machine and then we instantiate a virtual machine or a server based on that image. And then we need to figure out how to put data into that server, that VM. And everything else running over there is having specific versions, immutable, right? Whatever is the version of the operating system, that's what it should stay. Whatever is the version of the applications that are baked into that image is what we are having in that server. Later on, I will discuss how that changed with the advent of containers and schedulers and so on and so forth. But for now, if you would go, let's say, 10 years in the past, that's how we would approach immutability. Even though it is not truly different today, it's just that some names might have changed. So what are the advantages? What are the pros of having things immutable? To begin with, we know what each component in the system is. We know that for certain. It is always based on a specific version, on a specific image, and there are no configuration drifts simply because they cannot drift. They are always, always, always the same. They are immutable. It is easier to test simply because we know what we have and we can easily create as many instances of that something as we need, including for testing, right? We know the testing environment is going to be the same thing as some other environment, which is going to be the same as production and so on and so forth. And that helps a lot because it is easier to ensure that what is tested is what will be running in production or anywhere else. Because of that inchangeability, the state is predictable. We always know what we have. It is easy to track what that something is because, again, it's always the same. And finally, rollbacks are much easier. If everything is based on images, then all we have to do is to instantiate one image or another, no matter whether we want to move forward to the next release or roll back to the previous release. But not everything is great with immutable either. There are certain issues that we have to overcome, which by the way, we might need to overcome in mutable fashion as well, but that would be a separate subject. To begin with, we need to externalize data. If we create virtual machine images, and if we convert those images into servers, then we cannot keep data on machines simply because those servers instantiated from images are not going to have the data they need. So we need to ensure that data is somewhere else. It cannot be inside of the servers that host our operating systems and images simply because they are ephemeral. We create them and we destroy them and data needs to be persisted so we have to use external disks. And in those cases we need to attach data to one server or another depending on which one should be running at any given moment. Another negative thing, or not depending on how big your organization is, is that immutability does not work very well when we have single instance of something. And the reason is simple. If we create a new image and instantiate a new server based on that image, first we need to move data to that server before we decommission the old server. And that means that during some period of time we have multiple replicas of uh, the stuff that we run in our system. And if your system has a requirement to have a single replica, or maybe you don't want to have multiple servers running or multiple replicas of applications and so on and so forth, then immutable provides some benefits, but it is not necessarily a good idea. So the bigger the scale, the more servers and applications and replicas you're having, the more benefits you get from immutable or less benefits you get from immutable if you don't have much 
of something. So the bigger the scale, the more incentive to go for immutable approach. Now let's talk about where can we apply immutable approach or what might still stay mutable. Long, long time ago, in the past, when I was still young, almost everything was mutable because we were running things on real servers. That's before VMs came into being, or to be more precise, became popular. So everything was mutable. There was not much to choose from because simply those were the facts of life. Some people, some companies, some teams were using immutable approaches, but that was an exception more than a rule. And that's the era of configuration management tools, but we're going to get there in a second. Now let's talk about what came next. And what came next is virtual machines, a later on cloud that put virtual machines into a completely new level. And that's where we also got infrastructure as code tools like Terraform, Pulumi, and so on and so forth. Those are the tools that are leveraging the advantages of immutability. Those are the tools together with many others that were designed from day one to have immutable approach to everything. Now they can be used with mutable infrastructure and applications and vice versa, but that's their goal. That's where they really shine. Virtual machines enabled immutability for the masses simply because of the ability to create images and from those images to create any number of virtual machines and images can contain everything or nothing what depending on what you need there could be specific version of operating systems configured to do whatever it should do with instances of our applications already baked in and all we have to do is say hey create a virtual machine based on this image and that's about it there's nothing else to do but before that, we had bare metal servers, and that's where configuration management tools like CF Engine and later on Puppet and Chef and Ansible, like the newest popular one among the bunch, uh, came into being and really shine. Again, we can use those tools with immutable infrastructure, but that's not really what they're designed for. So we have tools that are making sure that the state of our bare metal servers, even though we can apply it to everything, is what it needs to do by changing and tweaking the state all the time. That's what mutable is. And that was the only reasonable way to do things in bare metal servers before the advent of virtual machines. But that's not what we have to do today because today we have immutable operating systems. And then things change all of a sudden because we have operating systems that were designed to be immutable. They cannot be changed by tweaking things here and there. Good example of that would be, let's say Talos. I just did a video about Talos. You should check it out. Uh, you might want to see it because it's absolutely awesome. And that's what it does. So instead of us replacing whole servers in an immutable way, Talos is replacing images of itself. So if we run certain version of Talos, then we can create in parallel new image basically essentially of Talos keep it in memory and then Talos just switches from one version of itself to another without changing that existing version. So it's pretty similar to how we create virtual machines based on images and how we create containers except that this is baked into the operating system. So Talos effectively is immutable without the need to destroy the whole server. And that's not necessarily the best thing to do in virtual machines, but in bare metal servers, that's what we need. That's how we make something that is mutable by design, you know, servers that cannot be destroyed easily and created easily, but we can still make them immutable. And that's absolutely awesome. That's the step that we were missing like 20 years ago when everything was bare metal. What really, really, really changed the game uh, between mutability and immutability are containers. So we, we have a server and that server could be created from an image or be mutable. No matter how we create a server, instead of deploying applications by putting binaries and configurations and so on and so forth, we were deploying containers. So we can have one container, two containers, three containers, four containers. And each of those containers would be immutable. Actually, not would be, is immutable. It has specific version of our application with specific configuration and so on and so forth. And then when we want to upgrade, instead of tweaking the behavior or the release of an application, we create a new container and then we shut down the old one. 
and then we create another container and shut down the old one. And then everything changed again when we got control planes. We had things like Mesos and Docker Swarm and Nomad and today basically everybody agrees that the control plane is Kubernetes but that does not really matter for this story. What does matter is that we have control planes and that means that we do not have to keep everything the same so that one server is always the same as the other server with everything everything same inside instead we can split things into different pieces and let control planes manage all those so today what we're doing is giving control planes all those different pieces we're giving control planes the information images of the servers of the operating systems and all the applications and then control planes are figuring out what to do and when to do it, what to put where, how to reshuffle, how to upgrade and so on and so forth. Control planes are taking care of drift detection reconciliation, making sure that what we have is exactly of what we should be having. And finally, we have universal API that allows us to have a single interface to manage everything. And the control plane of control planes, the control plane that everybody is using or should be using is Kubernetes. It is acting both as a control plane for what is inside itself, what is inside that Kubernetes cluster, as well of external resources. The simplest example would be external load balancer. It is creating external load balancers whenever we create ingresses. It is managing storage and now we're going much further than that and basically allowing Kubernetes to be a control plane of everything, whatever is happening outside that same cluster. And now comes the important question. Do you believe that Kubernetes and cloud or both of those things are the future or the present? If you do, then you are really talking about everything being immutable. The only way for those things to be truly, truly, truly effective is to be immutable. Cloud is based on immutable principles. Kubernetes is based on immutable principles. If you want to adopt either of the two or both, you need to go immutable. Not necessarily for everything, there are always maybe databases that should be mutable and a few other things, but for the vast majority of things, if you want to adopt Kubernetes, if you want to adopt cloud, you need to adopt immutability. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.